It might be hard to imagine, but there was a time when learning to read and write was a subversive, a dangerous, even a revolutionary act. Let me tell you the story of Frederick Douglass. He was born into slavery in the US in 1818. He taught himself to read, but he did so in secret because his owner disapproved, thinking a literate slave could become discontent and perhaps even demand freedom. Turns out he was right. Douglass read about states where slaves were free, escaped, and then jumped on a train to New York, where he eventually became a statesman and a social reformer. Now, back in the early 1800s, Douglass was in good company. 88% of the world's population couldn't read or write. But then, the idea of universal literacy took hold, a resource not just for the elite, but for everyone. It took time for that idea to spread, with over 60% of people still illiterate well into the 20th century. After that, though, growth was exponential, and today, 86% of the world's people can read and write. So how did that happen? Where did that exponential growth come from? Essentially, we decided to spend public money on schooling, with governments across the world boosting their education budgets and school enrollment. Back in Douglas's day, just one in five kids went to school. Today, in many countries, primary school enrollment has reached almost 100%. The benefits, by the way, are extraordinary. Basic education is linked to things like higher earnings and even to lower rates of child mortality. Have a look at this graphic. Each dot represents a different country, and it shows a fascinating trend researchers discovered a few years ago. The more years of schooling a woman has, the less likely it is for her child to die. 200 years ago, universal literacy may have seemed revolutionary and dangerous. Today, we've realized it's a no-brainer.